I'll do a quick introduction, um, and then we're going to introduce our team as well. Um, so my name is Matt Wilkins. I'm the project manager, um, a, a la licensed landscape architect, and also a park planner. So very excited to get to work on this project. Mike Singleton, principal at KTNA. I'm both a planner, a transportation planner, and a landscape architect. And uh, my in-laws used to live up here in Menifee. I'd go over there, so I spent a lot of time up here. But our office is from down in San Diego. We're learning your community in a lot more detail doing the inventory. And then uh, we also have Marissa Ritter in the back. She'll be helping out uh, tonight. And Nicole Grove also in the back. I appreciate them being here to help with us. So go ahead. All right, so uh, really for this evening, uh, we're going to keep it somewhat loose, conversational. This, again, is a kickoff. So we really want to talk about um, what the project is, uh, get you oriented on some key definitions that you'll hear throughout the project. And then we're going to have a little bit of uh, breakout group discussion. So we'll break out into two separate groups here. Um, and then with that, we'll have a little bit of a closing session where we gather all the thoughts and, and then send you off for the evening. All right, so just a, a little bit more on the introduction of the project. So the purpose of it is really to create a report for the uh, city of Menifee and all the park and recreational facilities throughout the city. Uh, it will identify the current deficiencies, future park facility and program needs, and recommendations for addressing these requirements. The project is one year long, it's slated to be one year long. Uh, we kicked off back in March, and it's anticipated to continue into next year, uh, about March next year. Um, again, here's the schedule. So as you can see, we're we're just here. Uh, we've done a bit of analysis and evaluation of the park system. Uh, we'll share some of that this evening, um, and that is somewhat ongoing. Uh, we are going through the public outreach uh, uh, phase right now, so that's where we're at this evening, obviously, with the first workshop. Um, with that, we'll be doing some citywide uh, and statistically valid surveying. Some of that you may have seen. You may have gotten it in the mail already. Um, so if so, please fill it out. If you have already, thank you for doing that. We actually have two surveys. So one is a statistically valid survey that you're, you'll get. It's a little bit longer. And then what you receive this evening is an abbreviated version of that. It's a little bit shorter. Um, and then we also have on each side of the walls here, there's a QR code if you want to just take it on your phone. Uh, so we'll make it a little bit easier there. Uh, cut back on some of the paper if need be. Um, so moving forward, though, we will have a second workshop in September. Right now we're targeting September 22nd for that. And then our final workshop will be in December, uh, December 1st. Um, and then that really gets us going into some of the final pieces for this master plan to get it into council, get it approved, and then start making a change within the park system. So what is a parks master plan? Really, it's a document that provides a guide for the orderly development of future parks, recreation, and open space facilities and programs that are requ required to meet the current and future needs of the community. So we want to address uh, the future demand, obviously some of the current things that we're seeing, but uh, there's a lot of growth that's happening in Menifee, as you know. So that's the, that's the impetus for this plan. We really want to make sure that it will address the needs of the community moving forward. Um, looking at all the programs, looking at some of the financials. So it's, it's really a robust document, and all the input that you give us through this process will really help us. Uh, what will the Parks Master Plan include? So kind of digging into it a little bit more, uh, it will review, uh, have a review of the park amenity conditions. Uh, we've actually done that. Um, we've completed all of the park inventory, and I will say there's some very beautiful parks. There's some Areas of refinement, um, so we'll, we'll want to hear that a little bit more from you all. Um, but we, we did walk each one of your parks, so we're very familiar with the park system today. Um, it will also include the distribution of parks and access to them. We'll talk a little bit about that this evening. Um, and then we'll have recommendations for park improvements and amenity dis, uh, additions in that report. We'll review uh, the recreational programs and have some suggested adjustments within there. Um, we'll also have uh, some planning for future park needs and new development population growth. As I mentioned, Menifee is growing, so we're, we're looking for um, where these parks need to be within the community. 
Uh, we'll have some priorities and funding strategies for changes. And then maintenance evaluation and recommendations. And then finally, a, really a comprehensive financial plan for operating the, and funding the park system. All right, I'll go over some key definitions here that you'll hear throughout the, the project. So we, we want to orient you so you're, you're uh, knowledgeable park planners that you're moving forward through this process with us. So uh, these are the four major definitions that you'll hear throughout the process. Uh, really, population-based standards is the, the equitable distribution of park and recreational facilities and the ability to serve all neighborhoods to ensure all socioeconomic segments of the population uh, our needs are met. And I'll, I'll just kind of break it down to those key bold terms because that's, that's kind of a lot. So equitable dis distribution to serve all of the population to make sure needs are met. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell there. Uh, park sheds, what are park sheds? And we're gonna show this again a little bit um, this evening. And you'll see this a bit more in the second workshop in the final uh, master plan as well. But really it's a park service study that maps each park and analyzes how it supports the households it serves within a specified distance, generating an estimate of number of nearby potential park users. Again, I'll boil it down to the park service study that's really looking at your household and the potential park users. So it's, it's fairly simple, and again, when we show some examples, you'll get a better understanding of that. Um, distribution of park services. So it's really a geographic distribution analysis that's correlating the distribution of parks and population and the different access ranges for various park types and user groups. Um, the, the key takeaway is really it's an analysis of parks and population. That's pretty simple there. And then um, you'll hear this term a little bit, a five minute walk, 10 minute walk, or a bike time. I think that one's pretty straightforward, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll describe it a little bit more. So it indicates the parks and, uh, or facilities that can be reached by a five minute or 10 minute walk or bike ride, depending on the type of park. That is really important because what we want to do is make sure that you can get to a park back home within 30 minutes and get that exercise that you know, all of our doctors are recommending, right? So, so that's a big thing, and it really helps with the placement of parks, too, throughout the community. That way we know if a park is not walkable, then you have to drive in a car. You know, there's, again, getting back to that term, equitable distribution, everybody should have that ability to walk to a park. The, the fun thing about this month is that it is uh, actually Parks uh, Month, so it, what we're celebrating the need for parks, um, what they do for, for everyone, and, and how it really uh, makes a community thrive. So that's what we're really trying to get to with this master plan. We want to make sure everybody has good parks that have good amenities, and, and you can get to them. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the difference between neighborhood parks, community parks, what those parks entail, and, and what needs you need to make sure that we can move forward and make the city better. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jonathan. Thank you, Matt. Um, so when we talk about the evolution of trails, parks, open space, and recreation, and before I continue, I do want to recognize we have two of our parks, recreation, and trail commissioners here. We have Bill Ackerman right over here and Dave Faust. We're actually volunteers. They volunteer um, for the city, and they um, meet with us on a monthly basis, and actually more than that, to help review these things. And so our parks commission actually developed a master plan and had it approved by the city council in 2016. So you'll see us um, use like the rediscover logo. So we're re-looking at that plan and refreshing it. That's the process we're going through right now. So next slide, please. Or I will do that myself. I rolled up my sleeves because that looked really cool. The sleeves rolled up. So uh, yeah, right. So refreshments in the back. Push the refreshments. So what have we done since uh, 2016? Quite a bit. In the last six uh, years, you can see we've added 12 parks and 84 acres into the town. There, I've worked at other cities where we didn't have 84 acres of parks. So we're having that many more over that period of time is excellent. And um, that's a mix of um, city-maintained parks and then um, parks that Valleywide uh, District also added. I don't know if you guys know the difference. There's a, a special district called Valleywide on the east side of town. They maintain and operate parks over there as well in addition to the city parks. And then we also have some future developments in the next 12 months. 
There's uh, parks on, on Underwood Park, that's a KB Homes development, uh, Remington Park, Ev the Evans Pump Park Track, uh, Evans Pump Track, it's actually gonna be named the Gale Webb, and kids are number one action sports park, that's on the um, southwest side of town, where that's under construction right now. If you guys don't know what a pump track is yet, you will by the time you, you leave here. It's, uh, and then uh, also Banner Park, and then in the future, there's uh, some more developments, housing developments that will also have some new parks, uh, Menifee Valley, which is on the northeast side of town, the uh, Legato development, which actually happened groundbreaking in a few weeks, uh, Cimarron Ridge, Cottonwood, Cantalina, Golden Meadow. So there's a lot of parks still to come, but we've made some good progress over the last few years. So I just wanted to note that, but um, we can always get better, we can always improve, and that's why we're going through this process of all of you today. Oh, Roman. Also, within the master plan, it did not only look at new parks for development, it looked at our current parks and things we needed to improve, things that were recommended by the community at that time in the 2015-2016 timeframe to be improved. So um, Bryce and his team really tackled all those things. They did about 19 of those 21 park improvements, and they also did some other adjustments to some of the current parks. A lot of these parks, like E.L. Peterson, Lalladere Park, uh, John Denver Park, La Marsh, Lazy Creek, they used to be county parks before the city incorporated in 2008. So once the city adopted them, made a lot of improvements. I don't know if you might have seen Lazy Creek Park, which is right down the street. We renovated the community center there, added another building. Um, Bryce has updated a lot of the playground equipment, added um, exercise equipment to the lot of parks. So they, they've been doing a great job. So I just want to thank Bryce for that, getting all the hard work. Thank you. And then also looking at the recreation components, as Matt mentioned, so we've added quite a few classes, there's been some trail enhancements, the Salt Creek Trail done by the county, um, the four, four miles of trail that starts at Getz Road goes all the way to Antelope, so um, definitely a great uh, amenity to have in the city. Coloma Wash Trail, we just renovated that a few months ago, that's right off of Han Road. I've seen that there, uh, Nova Park. Um, some playground upgrades there, Calle Tomas added that trail on the rest of the ranch neighborhood. Lazy Creek is mentioned in La Ladera, we did the playground and, and some trail stuff is there as well. Then um, we've been adding programs since the uh, department started. Um, and we continue to do that and definitely want to get more feedback on what other programs people might want to see. Where's your park ranger? Right there. Right there. Park ranger. I saw him the other day on the trail there with the e-bikes. Just say that. Well, they don't have, they're regular bikes, right, but they're not e-bikes. They're e-bikes. Yes. <laughs> Good job, Cliff. They don't look, look, they almost look like regular police officers. Yeah. I was testing you, if you know what kind of bike that was. <laughs> so, yeah, and so we do have a park ranger program. They're out, they're not here because they're patrolling on their e-bikes. <laughs> so, but they do the campfire programs, they do those on a monthly basis, and they also patrol our parks and make sure that, you know, everyone's behaving themselves out there. So I just wanted to give that brief update of you know the former master plan, the progress we made, and then where we're going from here. So I'll hand it over to Mike to continue. It's rather interesting that my first job coming out of uh, college back in 1982 was doing Canyon Lakes recreation plan. And so it's a, like a full circle for me to come back so many years later. Um, I would say that uh, we were kind of wondering why the city was doing their parks master plan so quickly after the other one was there. But when you look at, they got through most of the things that that plan recommended. Most cities don't do that. It, you know, they get one or two projects between the cycles between master plans, but now they, they need more ideas and more priorities that you can help us identify to move forward with. So the, the, they've been very successful in, in staying on top of making improvements. Um, so this is really your park system, which is really made up of um, and this, it was confusing for us to start off with, but we understand now based on the fact that, that uh, when the city did incorporate, not all the park systems came with it. So Valleywide um, does all those yellow dots that you see up there are the Valleywide parks that are still under their management. In general, they're the ones that are mostly to the east of 215, but there's been some city parks that have been developed over there now, so it's not good rule of thumb to say if it's east of 215 then it's a valley wide park but in general that's the way it is you also have all the uh, city run parks but here in Menifee you have a very large number of HOA based parks and they are helping to satisfy recreation requirements for those developments that were built there so we have to keep in mind all three of those but it is a pretty extensive park system you can see a little bit though that 
They're, um, the east side, uh, especially along that central core, is very well served with parks. But looking at the southwest side, I know there's not as much development down there, but really doesn't have the park distribution in there. So we'll look for things like that as to whether or not there should be some additional park facilities in areas like that. Um, so part of it, the park service area, is just to be able to, to make a judgment call of who is likely to utilize this park. And the idea of a, either a mini park or a neighborhood park are the things that people do need close to their residents. They're not the citywide type facilities with big sports fields, swimming pools, and things like that. They're more of a neighborhood park. Those are the ones where you want to make sure everyone has easy access to those that are fairly close to where they actually live. There is a standard out there now that uh, a lot of cities are trying to, to um, meet, which is they, within a 15-minute walk time of any house, um, the goal is generally to get 75% of your population to be able to be that close to a park. And so that's one of the standards that are being used now. And it's, mo it's not as much about drive time as it is distance, and they use walking speed as that 15-minute determination. Uh, so we, we do like, like to look at the uh, neighborhood parks and the community regional parks. The, it's certainly much more likely that you would drive to a community-based park, and you know it doesn't make sense for you to have every specialty facility in every neighborhood park. So those are the ones where you try to get the specialty facilities and different sports-type uh, facilities at a community park. Um, so the way that park master plans always used to do it, they would figure out a park. And this is just a sample. It's not here in Menifee, but you actually have a park that's shown in the center of those circles, and they would just do a, a circle around it. The problem is nobody gets to a park as a straight shot. No one can fly like a crow. So the idea that that's within half a, half a, a mile or a quarter mile doesn't apply anymore. So when we do the analysis, we actually look at where the park is, and then look at the street and sidewalk network and assume a certain speed that typically someone walks and that the streets actually drive based on speed limit. And we can figure out how far away from the park is it likely to be considered that neighborhood or that park shed itself. So that's um, one of the things you'll see a lot more that we'll do in mapping. But the old way, again, was just doing a circle. And usually the way that these park sheds show up now, they're more diamond shaped. And because mostly streets are going you know, uh, at right angles to each other. So uh, what this one is trying to show you, everything in the red would be over counting um, that radius circle that was normally considered to be the park shed. But now when you do things like this, so like in this case, the sample over here, all those white areas are where there's no streets. Well, normally that would say everything in that circle is within uh, access for that park shed, where we have no facilities, no trails, no um, roads or anything like that, you can't get there, so therefore it's not really in the park shed. Or when you have something like a freeway that cuts through an area, you've got to travel up to the nearest interchange to get across it and go back. So that's why we use this type of a system now. And we'll, we'll be showing you a lot of those maps here real soon when we get uh, the rest of the analysis done. Um, the other thing is uh, standards. The state does require every city to identify a population-based standards for parks. They do not dictate what that should be, but they say you just have to have one. So here in Menifee, it's actually considered to be five acres per thousand population. So that is the standard that you're trying to meet. And what we do is that we really add up all the acres of your parks, and uh, we do break them into neighborhood parks, community parks, and uh, and then a sub-summary of all those active parks. We typically try to convince the city to have a neighborhood park standard and then a community park standard. So right now we're suggesting that the neighborhood standard be two acres per thousand and that the community uh, parks would be three acres per thousand. So that still gets you where you've been in the past. Uh, so um, the, the complication that we have on this one is that you've got valley-wide um, park sites, you've got HOA park sites, and you've got city park sites. And all of them are addressing some type of a recreation need. So the way we count those is going to be important. If you do not have any deficits uh, and you have surplus of parks, then when a new development comes in, it's very difficult for you to make that developer build a park or pay for a park. So most cities do have some type of a deficit so that when that development comes in, they say, whatever your fair share is of the population increase that you're going to cause for our town, 
And whatever that deficit is, you have to help make up that difference. You're not solving past problems, but you need to solve your own problems on the development that comes in. So that's probably one of the reasons why NFT has such a good distribution of parks, because a lot of them were built by developers in the first place. So that's one of the things that we'll actually be looking at. And again, we have to take into account the valley-wide the HOA and the city acres themselves. Right now, you're showing a bit of a deficit, not a huge. But we're, we're do work up and down throughout Southern California for parks, and this is a pretty good, you're coming pretty close to your standard. Um, some places we go to, it's ridiculously how far off they are. Uh, again, the state does not require you to meet that standard even when you post it. It just means you should be working towards that. And, and if developments come in, you have the right then to expect that the developer help you meet that standard. All right, oh, and that upper graphic is just like, we need to look at not only where people are now, but where are people going to be in the future based on development patterns and how, how much population increase do you expect. That's just that map over there is going to feed that just takes into account the census data uh, based on census blocks. So the darker colors are where there's higher concentrations of uh, population. So we also look at around these park sheds, what's the age demographic? And you do have some, you know, more family oriented, um, uh, developments, you've got some more senior oriented developments, and their park amenity requirements are different than the two. So we also look at who's around those parks and try to figure out what's the best type of amenity that needs to be close by them. Alright, so at this point then what we're going to do is uh, break into two groups over here. There's a, a series of questions that we want to ask you and want to have a dialogue. We are hoping that you will fill out the survey tonight or very soon after tonight. But before you fill out the survey, we just want to have some conversations going. So uh, we'll break into two different groups. We'll probably pull the table out and arrange some chairs around it. But one of the first things for you to do is to put a dot on the parks that you currently use, that, that you're constantly using these days. And then um, you can also start putting in notes on these plans themselves. But then we'll start going into some questions after everyone kind of gets a seat and settles down. And we'll um, just you know, it's, it's good to have a conversation what you're hearing other people say, even before you fill out the questionnaire, because it makes you think about certain things when someone brings up a topic. So, we can certainly answer a lot of other questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you in these breakout groups. But at this point, so we're, we're going to take about 30 minutes on, on breakout groups, so we'll have available time to uh, talk with you and, and not interrupt.